Dolly and Dean helped raise several of Dolly's younger siblings in Nashville, with her nieces and nephews referring to her as Aunt Granny, which became the name to one of the singer's Dollywood restaurants. The couple have no children of their own, but Dolly is the godmother of singer Miley. Dolly is the fourth of 12 children born to A.V. Lee Caroline Nay Owens, 1923-2003, and Robert Lee Parton Sr., 1921-2000. Her father was a subsistence farmer and construction worker, and her mother was a homemaker for their large family. Her 11 pregnancies between 1939 and 1959 made her a mother of 12 by the age of 35. Dolly's middle name comes from her maternal great-great-grandmother, Rebecca. She has described her family as being, dirt poor. Regular spot on his weekly TV series The Porter Wagoner Show, and in his live road show. Wagoner convinced his label, RCA Victor, to sign her. They recorded several albums and singles together, and became one of the country's most popular and successful double acts. Dolly had always wanted a solo career, and decided to leave Wagoner's company. Their last duet concert took place in April 1974, and she left his TV show in mid-1974. Their last album together was 1975 Say Forever You'll Be Mine. Wagoner died in 2007 at the age of 80. Dolly was at his bedside alongside his family. I Will Always Love You, was written about her professional breakup from Wagoner. Listen, Dolly Parton, Dolly Parton Facts, Singer's Age, Husband, Family and Net Worth Revealed. The 5th of May 2022, 938 Updated, the 17th of March 2023, 1028. Dolly Parton, Picture, Getty, Dolly Parton is one of the most iconic and successful country singers of all time. Even if you're not a massive country fan, you'll no doubt have heard of Dolly Parton. And chances are, you love her. Here are all the big facts about Dolly that all fans should know. Dolly Parton songs, what are her biggest hits? Dolly Parton, Jolene 19,880,110. Dolly has composed over 3,000 songs, including, I Will Always Love You, which became a huge hit for Whitney Houston in 1992. Dolly Parton's 10 Greatest Songs Ever, Ranked. Watch Olivia Newton-John's Stunning Posthumous, Jolene, Duet with Dolly Parton. Her other big hits include, Jolene, Coat of Many Colors, Islands in the Stream, with Kenny Rogers, and, 9 to 5 Feet. Dolly Parton Age, How Old Is She? Dolly was born on January 19, 1946. She celebrated her 76th birthday in 2022. Dolly Parton Husband, Is She Married? Dolly Parton on Husband Carl Dean, The Rumors Aren't True. In 1966, Dolly married Carl Dean. He is a retired asphalt road paving businessman, who prefers to stay out of the limelight. While Dolly does not use Dean's surname professionally, she has said that her passport says, Dolly Parton Dean. She has also said that he has seen her perform only once. The history of Dolly Parton and Carl Dean's 54-year marriage, and their secret to long-lasting love. In 2011, the couple celebrated their 45th anniversary. Dolly said, We're really proud of our marriage. It's the first for both of us. And the last. In 2016, she announced that she and her husband would renew their vows to mark their 50th wedding anniversary later in the month. Dolly Parton Children, Does She Have Any Kids? Dolly Parton and Miley Cyrus perform, Jolene, at the Grammys. Dolly and Dean helped raise several of Dolly's younger siblings in Nashville, with her nieces and nephews referring to her as, Aunt Granny, which became the name to one of the singer's Dollywood restaurants. How Dolly Parton has massively contributed to creating the COVID-19 vaccine. The couple have no children of their own, but Dolly is the godmother of singer Miley Cyrus. Who were Dolly Parton's parents and family? Dolly is the fourth of 12 children born to A.V. Lee. Caroline Nay Owens, 1923-2003, and Robert Lee Parton Sr., 1921-2000. Her father was a subsistence farmer and construction worker, and her mother was a homemaker for their large family. 
Her 11 pregnancies between 1939 and 1959 made her a mother of 12 by the age of 35. Dolly Parton talks Elvis, 9 to 5, me too and what she'd tell Jolene today. Dolly's middle name comes from her maternal great-great-grandmother, Rebecca. She has described her family as being, dirt poor. What was Dolly Parton's relationship with Porter Wagoner? Porter Wagoner and Dolly Parton, just someone I used to know. In 1967, country star Porter Wagoner invited Dolly to join his company, offering her a regular spot on his weekly TV series The Porter Wagoner Show, and in his live road show. Wagoner convinced his label, RCA Victor, to sign her. They recorded several albums and singles together, and became one of the country's most popular and successful double acts. Dolly had always wanted a solo career, and decided to leave Wagoner's company. Their last duet concert took place in April 1974, and she left his TV show in mid-1974. Their last album together was 1975 Say Forever You'll Be Mine. Wagoner died in 2007 at the age of 80. Dolly was at his bedside alongside his family. I Will Always Love You, was written about her professional breakup from Wagoner. What and Where is Dollywood? Dolly at Dollywood in 1993. Picture, Getty. Dollywood is a theme park located in the Knoxville Smoky Mountains Metroplex in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. It is the biggest ticketed tourist attraction in the state. Originally called Rebel Railroad in 1961, and later Gold Rush Junction and Silver Dollar City, it was renamed Dollywood after the singer bought an interest in 1986. In 2010, Dolly said she became involved with the project because she always thought that if I made it big or got successful at what I had started out to do, that I wanted to come back to my part of the country and do something great, something that would bring a lot of jobs into this area. The park has several thrill rides, traditional crafts and music of the Smoky Mountains area, as well as concerts and musical events each year, including appearances by Dolly and her family, and other national and local musical acts. Dolly Parton is estimated to be worth a huge $500 million, 367 million pounds. Parton's mother, Avi Lee, cared for their large family. Her 11 pregnancies, the 10th being twins, in 20 years made her a mother of 12 by age 35. Parton credits her musical abilities to her mother, often in poor health, she still managed to keep house and entertain her children with Smoky Mountain folklore and ancient ballads. A.V. Lee's ancestors were Welsh so she knew many of old ballads that immigrants from the British Isles brought to southern Appalachia in the 18th and 19th century. A.V. Lee's father, Jake Owens, was a Pentecostal preacher, and Parton and her siblings all attended church regularly. Parton has long credited her father for her business savvy, and her mother's family for her musical abilities. When Parton was a small girl, her family moved from the Pittman Center area to a farm up on nearby Locust Ridge. Most of her cherished memories of youth happened there. Today, a replica of the Locust Ridge cabin resides at Parton's namesake theme park Dollywood. The farm acreage and surrounding woodland inspired her to write the song, my Tennessee Mountain Home, in the 1970s. Years after the farm was sold, Parton bought it back in the late 1980s. Her brother Bobby helped with building restoration and new construction. Parton has described her family as being, dirt poor. Parton's father paid missionary drive. Robert F. Thomas with a sack of cornmeal for delivering her. Parton would write a song about Dr. Thomas when she, was grown. She also outlined her family's poverty in her early songs, Coat of Many Colors, and In the Good Old Days When Times Were Bad. For six or seven years, Parton and her family lived in their rustic, one-bedroom cabin on their small subsistence farm on Locust Ridge. This was a predominantly Pentecostal area located north of the Greenbrier Valley of the Great Smoky Mountains. Music played an important role in her early life. She was brought up in the Church of God Cleveland, Tennessee, in a congregation her grandfather, Jake Robert Owens, pastored. Her earliest public performances were in the church, beginning at age six. At seven, she started playing a homemade guitar. 
When she was eight, her uncle bought her first real guitar. Parton began performing as a child, singing on local radio and television programs in the East Tennessee area. By 10, she was appearing on the Saws Walker show on both Wivik Radio and WBIR-TV in Knoxville, Tennessee. At 13, she was recording the single, Puppy Love, on a small Louisiana label, Gold Band Records, and appeared at the Grand Ole Opry, where she first met Johnny Cash, who encouraged her to follow her own instincts regarding her career. After graduating from Sevier County High School in 1964, Hardin moved to Nashville the next day. Her initial success came as a songwriter, having signed with Combine Publishing shortly after her arrival. With her frequent songwriting partner, her uncle Bill Owens, she wrote several charting singles during this time, including two top ten hits, Bill Phillips's Put It Off Until Tomorrow, 1966, and Skeeter Davis's Fuel to the Flame, 1967. Her songs were recorded by many other artists during this period, including Kitty Wells and Hank Williams Jr. She signed with Monument Records in 1965. At age 19, she initially was pitched as a bubblegum pop singer. She released a string of singles, but the only one that charted, Happy, Happy Birthday Baby, did not crack the Billboard Hot 100. Although she expressed a desire to record country material, Monument resisted, thinking her unique, high soprano voice was not suited to the genre. In 